Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program coming to you live from the BBM Global Network Channel 100 and Tune In Radio. The Caring Generation focuses on conversations about health, well-being, caring for ourselves and loved ones all tied together with humor and laughter that are essential to being a caregiver. On this program, we'll be talking about elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs, how these ideas link to the present situation of caregiving and COVID-19. I'll share situations that caregivers are experiencing that have resulted from the disruptions of COVID-19, including why these situations might feel upsetting. We will relate feeling upset to the big five factors of personality and elder care workplace solutions. Our personalities, the way that we react to life can help us and the companies we work for to determine what type of elder care workplace solutions and communications will help us succeed. I'll share specific information about elder care programs and tips for caregivers to manage days when you feel like life is a struggle or has been turned upside down. If we're all honest, I think we would say that COVID-19 has changed our lives significantly. Changes in daily routines, schedules, and normal ways of doing things that have taken many of us out of our comfort zones. Our guest for this program will talk about a subject that is familiar to all of us, caregiver stress. Dr. Christopher Vagundas, Associate Professor from Rice University, will join us to talk about how stress gets under the skin and impacts health and diseases that our elderly parents are experiencing and those that we as caregivers may experience in older adulthood. He will share links between stress, chronic disease, and the immune system. We've all heard that chronic disease and a weakened immune system makes us more susceptible to COVID-19 and other illnesses. Let's talk about elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs for this. I'll begin by sharing concerns expressed by employees in a recent study completed by the Society of Human Resource Management. As a result of COVID-19, about 40% of all employees are reporting experiencing symptoms of depression often. 35% of employees report feeling tired or having little energy. Let's take this one step further. Nearly one in four employees, or about 23%, report feeling bad about themselves or feel that they are a failure who has let themselves or their families down because of COVID-19. These employees feel down, depressed, or hopeless. They have little interest in anything. This clearly shows the mental health effects of COVID-19 on employees. If we take this even one step further and relate the concept of feeling depressed, down, and hopeless to the working caregiver population and the need for elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs, we can start again with that one in four employees, that 23% who feel bad. Of that 23%, Two in three of those people, or about 65%, they are working caregivers who have greater concerns about COVID and the effects on their family. This 65% of employees with greater worries live with healthcare workers in their immediate family, maybe a husband, wife, daughter, son, or other family member who might be a nurse, a doctor, or staff in a medical facility or caregivers working in nursing homes or home care agencies. If we add that component of having a healthcare worker in the family, and then on top of that, add having an elderly parent over the age of 65 living in the house, plus other family members who have risk factors for COVID-19, it's a crazy situation with a lot of stress. 
We have a large employee population of working caregivers who are, they just don't even know what to do. They're so hopeless. That group, these caregivers, has much in common with the general employee population who are reporting difficulty concentrating, they're feeling burned out, emotionally drained. Nearly half of the employees in this survey report feeling used up at the end of the day, women at 48% to men at 41%. If you're working, what do you think? Is caregiving adding to more stress during COVID-19? The statistics also confirm that 31% of employees feel like they've given up job opportunities, 28% are worried about their pay and their benefits, 24% are worried about job security, and 22% are worried about safe working conditions. But on the plus side, 53% of employees say that their relationships with coworkers hasn't been affected by COVID-19, and even more, 65%, say their relationships with their supervisor has not been harmed. What do you think? Is that true for you? These are research statistics. Let me tell you a little bit about what caregivers are sharing with me. And this information does back up the research and it will emphasize why elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs are really essential programs that employers should offer. They really shouldn't be optional in the workplace. So on the topic of working caregivers feeling drained, It's a common experience that is increased for caregivers who say that they are remote workers who might have young children and elderly parents in the home. Those remote caregivers are trying to work and minimize distractions. A large percentage of employees in the survey confirmed feeling distracted. There's a huge difference between going to an office where you have a desk and some peace and quiet and trying to work versus trying to do that at home where there's constant commotion and your children and your elderly parents may be just constantly interrupting you. Some caregivers are telling me that they're creating this little safe workspace in a bedroom where they can lock the door to minimize interruptions. Another caregiver told me that she turned down a promotion because the family lost the paid caregiver who was coming into the home at night. Now, this caregiver is awake during the night taking care of her father, which would have negatively affected her sleep and her ability to take that promotion to a full-time position. So in this case, we have working caregivers who are sleep deprived, worrying about giving up job opportunities, lost income, they have job security concerns. The combination of COVID-19 and caregiving has increased mental and physical health concerns for caregivers. Coming up after this break, we have Dr. Christopher Fagundes from Rice University. He's going to join us to talk about the health effects of stress for caregivers. We'll also continue our conversation about elder care in the workplace, so elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs in the second half of this radio program for caregivers and aging adults. Reminder that helpful information for caregivers and aging adults is in my Caring for Aging Parents Caregiving blog. You can visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com. On the top bar, there is a tab you can click on click on caregiving blog and all of my recent blog posts and articles will show up there. You can also go to the Caring Generation radio show tab. It's under media. And under that, you will find all of the past Caring Generation radio show podcasts and the show transcripts there. There's a button that you can push to listen to the show while you're watching and reading it. So, Check out those programs. They are all there for you, as this one will be for you next week. This is Pamela D. Wilson on The Caring Generation, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, 
and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation Radio Show for caregivers live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. With us is Dr. Christopher Fagundes from Rice University. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. So let's start with this question. How does the stress of being a caregiver affect the body? Well, the thing with um, caregiving is that chronic stressor. So when you think about any kind of psychological expressor that we experience throughout the day, we have what's called a stress response. Um, and everybody kind of knows that you have this heart rate that goes up and um, probably heard of the hormone cortisol being secreted. But in the acute short term, it um, isn't damaging per se. But in something like the stress of caregiving, you get this chronic stressor over time. And what ends up happening then is it actually kind of gets under the skin and impacts just about every um, system of your body um, in ways that can make you more vulnerable to diseases. Um, The biggest issue that we see is with um, caregiving stress in general is that it also disrupts your ability kind of to recover from stressors. And this has a lot to do with the fact that you're not able to do the things that would normally help you recover, like get a good night's sleep, um, exercise on a regular basis, have social support to buffer you during those um, difficult times. All of those things help people go from sort of that, you know, peak of stress down to baseline, but caregivers don't get that as much. I have caregivers in my group who some of them do 20 hours a week. Some of these are spousal caregivers 24-7. How does that stress affect their immune systems? So that's a really good question. Um, To be honest, caregivers are probably the most well-characterized group of chronically stressed individuals um, in the sense of understanding what happens to the immune system. And it's not great news per se, but it's helpful to know so you can prevent. Um, One thing that's been demonstrated um, quite a bit, very reliably, is that it impacts wound healing, actually. So there's been really elegant um, experimental studies where they actually have caregivers and match comparisons and do, you know, experimental puncture wounds. They pay them for this, that it's all safe. Um, And what they find is, sure enough, wounds heal a lot slower among chronically stressed caregivers. Other things that we see are um, control of latent herpes viruses. So um, a latent herpes virus, you might have had chicken pox when you were a kid, and that would be something called herpes zoster. And what happens is you get chicken pox, and your body figures out how to, how to fight it. And what ends up happening is that for the rest of your life, in latently infected cells, you, know, you still have that virus. But here's the problem. When you're chronically stressed, you're much more likely to have a reactivation, if you will, 
Um, in the case of chicken pox, that would be, um, you know, you'd have shingles as an older. Um, well, sh shingles when you're chronically stressed. Most of the time that happens in older adults, but not always. Um, other things that we see, the biggest one that we've been focusing on a lot for the last decade or two is this notion of systemic inflammation. So when we think of inflammation, we might think of something like um, a scratch or a wound we get and you see sort of this redness. That's actually good and that's adaptive, but what we don't want to see is this chronic levels of low-grade inflammation. And what ends up happening actually is that when you're chronically stressed, cortisol, which actually normally puts out the inflammation, you can almost think about it as a fire extinguisher, stops working. The immune cells become insensitive to it. So that's why you see among chronic um, care, you see in chronic caregiving stress, kind of higher levels of inflammation in the blood. Oh, it's, it's uh, a lot of stress. So I know that for older people, they always talk about getting flu and pneumonia in injections or vaccinations. And I, I saw something in one of your reports about this. So does, does stress affect the effectiveness of those vaccines for the caregivers and for the elderly people who are receiving care? Yes, that's a good question. Now, it really depends on age is a big deal with this one. So if you're chronically stressed, but younger, especially, you know, younger than 60, um, 65, and you get a, a vaccine, um, you're more, most likely going to do what's called sericovert, meaning that your immune system is going to mount a response and you're going to get um, a fourfold increase, in which is called antibody titers. So, so what that means is you're protected, right? But the com when you get older, that doesn't always happen. And what we end up seeing is when you're older and you're experiencing chronic stress, like in the case of a, uh, a caregiver, um, that's when we see um, the real kind of differences emerge. Um, to give you an example, there's a, there's a study that shows that, um, and this, the numbers would be different now because influenza vaccines have changed, but um, there was a, one of the initial studies that showed that, you know, among 70-year-olds, only 60% actually had that fourfold increase maintained, but in caregivers, it was down to 26%. Now, those are only for people that are over 70, so you can see how age and stress interact. Um, other vaccines, like you mentioned, the pneumonia vaccine, um, you know, that um, is also um, highly relevant in the sense of stress. Um, impacting your ability to sericovert. And the reason why that has any differential to when we talk about the flu vaccine is because it doesn't, the pneumonia vac vaccine works independent of a certain aspect of the immune system called T cells. And can you translate this to the, you know, we're all expecting this coronavirus vaccine to be a miracle. Oh, and I guess we're, we're going to be heading out to a break. But so let me ask you this question. And then when we come back from the break, you can answer it. So a lot of caregivers are saying to me, oh, we're just waiting for this vaccine because we're worried about taking the virus into our elderly parents. And so after the break, if you can maybe answer, is that vaccine going to be an answer or is it still going to be less effective in those stressed caregivers and in their elderly parents who have a lot of chronic disease? Listeners, we will continue our conversation with Dr. Fagundes from Rice University after this break. Check out the podcast of this show on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. It's on the Media tab and then the Caring Generation radio show. This is Pamela D. Wilson, your host for The Caring Generation, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and 
and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolly Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. This is Pamela D. Wilson, Caregiving Expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. We're back with Dr. Christopher Fagundes from Rice University. Doctor, if you could answer that question that I posed before the break about the coronavirus vaccine and effectiveness. Yeah, so the the, the question about will the um, coronavirus vaccine Um, be less effective among highly stressed caregivers. We have no reason to think it would. And in a way, that's because we know that COVID-19 produces what we would say is a robust response um, to, and T cells are um, heavily involved. That's actually a really good thing because that means that we're we are getting memory and there is a huge potential for a vaccine to work. But there is, good news related to this. Just like now what we do with like the influenza vaccine is give a higher uh, dose to those in vulnerable populations, they might have some type of protocol developed for that, for this vaccine. Of course, all that work needs to be kind of done before we'll know that kind of thing. But what you typically see with the influenza vaccine now that all this research we did on caregivers 20 years ago has taught us is to get a higher dose, for example. Another option could be a booster type of shot. That makes sense. So you were talking earlier about the differences in age, you know, somebody who's 60 baby versus somebody who's 80 and and stress and everything. Is there an explanation of that, of like a higher mortality risk due to all this chronic stress and inflammation? And then how does sleep come into all of that? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Chronic stress does appear to impact people's what we would call their biological age. So if you think about it, there's the chronological age, and that's just how old you are, you know. And the biological age is, well, if we took your cells and looked at them, especially these things called telomeres that you might have heard of at the end of DNA, we can look at differences in a standardized way that can determine one's biological age. Basically, how stress and other factors in their life have made their biological age either longer or shorter. There's a classic study that shows that among older adults that they saw a 15-year differential um, between individuals that were caregivers, um, and these were older adult caregivers, um, versus um, match comparisons. I wouldn't think much of that actual number 15, it can move around a bit. But what it shows is it's certainly impacting the aging process. But the good news is we know things we can do about it. Um, And we're getting better and better at taking those in our lives. So um, one major factor that impacts people's um, biological age, of course, is 
fleet. Um, as far as how it impacts what we, inflammation, uh, which I talked about a little earlier, which is very, very related to people's biological age, um, what we see is that people that have frequent sleep disturbances are uh, at risk. The interesting part is that shorter sleep duration in and of itself, um, recent work um, has shown that that probably doesn't enhance inflammation until you get the point of sleep depri deprivation. So it seems to be the disturbances that one um, you know, needs to look out, which obviously is a difficult thing when we're talking about um, certain individuals that's within the caregiving population. It, other things that people um, can do, we're learning more and more about it. Fascinating studies to show that meditation, mindfulness, yoga practices don't just make people feel better psychologically, but we actually, when we take their blood and look at how it's impacting inflammatory levels and different um, biomarkers that I've talked about earlier that are associated with aging, they're reversing. So there is something we can do. So we've got this aging issue. We've got the lack of sleep. What other factors are impacting the stress that caregivers are experiencing? Well, the thing with stress in general is that it's highly variable based on a lot of different things about a person's background. So in one sense, it's how we interpret a stressor, right? So not two people interpret stressors in the same way. We know for caregivers that those that have high self-efficacy, meaning that they think to themselves it's going to be a challenge, but I can overcome it, um, seem to have um, better outcomes. We also know things like early adversity um, has an, an effect on how people are able to sort of navigate stressors um, later in life. So those type of things actually impact just how the stressor is going to affect us. So, so even though you can be, you know, the same age in the same situation, what you come in with and how you're interpreting those stressors plays a major role. You know, you were talking about blood tests earlier, and this is like a totally off the wall question, but let's say I'm this stressed out caregiver and I go to my doctor and I ask him to run a blood test to tell me if I'm stressed. Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, yes and no. You could, you could ask for a test of like how high are your inflammatory levels, which we know are impacted by stress. And you can get something called C-reactive protein or CRP assessed. But the thing is, that also has confounds. For example, being overweight, uh, eating a lot of high fat kind of meals, that can also impact those levels. So the source of that high inflammation, you wouldn't be 100% confident with. Where it's um, coming from. You know, other things that we know impact stress are like blood pressure, but once again, that's multifaceted. So there are indicators, but at the same time, those indicators could also be indicators of other risk factors. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to head out to our next break. Listeners, um, check out the podcast of this show. It'll be on my website next week at PamelaDWilson.com. Go to the media tab and then click on the link for the Caring Generation radio show. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, your host for the Caring Generation. You are with us live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and tune in radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. 
Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. The Caring Generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, health, and everything in between. We're back to talk about elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs. Earlier in the program, I mentioned the big five personality factors. Some of these relate to the idea of the word ocean, O-C-E-A-M, because the traits include openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, which also means negativity. Studies confirm that these traits can predict workplace behavior and performance, and even to the extent that they can help employees work well with others. That concept is important for workplaces who offer elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs. Rather than having working caregivers feel like they have to choose between work and leaving a job to become that full-time caregiver, for an elderly parent, if the workplace will investigate and offer elder care workplace solutions, and elder care programs, everybody can be more open to finding solutions to meet the needs of the workplace and the needs of caregivers who might be working remotely or coming into the office. If we do that, that really represents a win-win solution for everybody. However, making elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs available also means that working caregivers must be willing to learn new habits and learn new information. So in addition to all of these statistics that we talked about that relate to employee stress as the result of COVID-19, there are actually statistics about the effects of education on population health. So if you guys have been watching TV and you see Dr. Deborah Burks out there and Dr. Fauci, they're talking a lot about population health and trying to educate those of us who are watching those news briefings or those of us who have. Our responses to the challenges posed by COVID-19 are better or worse because of the skills and the knowledge that we learn from press briefings like those. And also knowledge that we possess maybe from our workplaces in the areas of critical thinking and problem solving. Caregiver stress levels increase when problems relating to the care of elderly parents increase. That is no surprise. Stress rises when health and money decisions have to be made. And caregivers a lot of times are afraid of making the wrong decisions, or at least that's what they tell me. The idea of making difficult decisions in caregiving, it's not new. There is more on that subject in the Caring Generation radio podcast called Making Life-Changing Decisions, where I talk about the emotional trade-offs of making those difficult decisions. Elder care workplace solutions should always include caregiving awareness and caregiving online programs to offer working caregivers the opportunity to learn about everything involved with caregiving, lifestyle choices, health risks, how to manage stress. Caregivers who 
become more educated. They are less likely to develop unhealthy coping styles that relate to stress. We talked a little bit about that with Dr. Fagundes. The unhealthy coping styles are likely those 23% of employees in the study who said that they felt hopeless and helpless and depressed. By learning, caregivers in that groups can feel empowered to change situations. They can gain confidence in their caregiving skills and abilities. And really, it's no surprise that COVID-19, as I call it, it's just been a routine crusher for everybody, including working employees. If you're a caregiver, you know the effects of a change in routine upon your aging parent. COVID has changed all of our routines. Changing a routine is a very common factor for both caregivers and elderly parents, because in a sense, we're in this health disaster, this COVID add on top of everything together, because everything is changing, whether we want it to or not, we are totally not in control of this situation. So if you think about it, how many people do you know personally or at work who are not open to new ideas, meaning they want to stick with what they know? That means that for those people, Any type of change, responding to the unexpected situations of being a caregiver, changes from COVID-19, will be more stressful for those people who lack that personality trait of being open. Success in being a remote worker and juggling work and caregiving means that those caregivers have to be more open to new ideas and concepts, new ways to be able to get the work done. Employees in all walks of life should be open to participating in elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs so that you can learn how to manage stress. In a sense, we're kind of looking at how to reprogram that computer in our brain to avoid saying, well, we've never done it that way, or this is how we've always done that. Close thinking won't get us moving forward to relieve the stress of change that results from COVID-19's effect on being that caregiver. As a caregiver, if you think of an interaction with the healthcare system, maybe a doctor, you can think about the idea of openness. So research confirms that physicians communicate less with patients who appear to be disinterested or less educated. Patients and older adults who go to appointments and they don't ask questions, they don't take an interest in their health, the doctors give them more directive suggestions than have conversations with them. So in this case, fewer discussions occur. There's a lower level of interaction between the doctor and you as the patient or your elderly parent. So in a sense, it results in a lack of teamwork and problem solving. When you think of openness in that manner, how does being closed-minded result in less than an ideal situation? It really results in your elderly parent not getting the care that he or she really wants or needs. In my elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs, my class participants, I offer them specific instructions for becoming educated and more engaged caregivers and patients so that you are taken seriously by the healthcare system. That idea of openness also results in the idea of vulnerability and caregivers being able to say, hey, I don't, I know I don't know everything. It's so true. It's impossible to know everything that can possibly occur. And by stating that, then doctors are more open to have conversations with you to give more information. So if we look at the personality factor of conscientiousness, it's that pattern of being persistent and determined to achieve a goal, which is care for your elderly parents. Employees who are high on that trait, they work hard, put plans into action, get the job done. Conscientious people nearly always finish what they start, and they're less likely to be swayed by impulsive behaviors. People who are low in conscientiousness tend to change course, and they can be easily distracted. So the word spontaneous and impulsive might apply to those people. As conscientious caregivers, we want to be orderly, dependable, determined, dutiful to the care of our parents. And it's a skill that we can learn. Many caregivers fall into situations because they don't think about the long term. That's the similar habit that probably got our parents to where they are today, needing help and being unprepared. So we'll talk more on the subject of conscientiousness and the link to being a caregiver responded to COVID-19 after this break. Helpful information for caregivers and aging adults is on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker on the caring generation, live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. What 
if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation introducing betterhomeandgarden.com that's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter n in better home and garden betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. This is The Caring Generation coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Share The Caring Generation with your elderly parents, brothers, sisters, and your workplace. We're back talking about the idea of conscientiousness. So a similar habit that we can talk about is this idea of wanting something. So for example, rather than saying something like, oh, there's a donut and I want to have this donut. If you are a conscientious person, you may say, well, I see that donut there. I'm not going to eat it because I'm trying to lose weight or because I have high cholesterol. So conscientiousness is, it's a personality trait. It's a skill that we can learn if we want to achieve specific goals. Elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs can succeed in improving care for our elderly parents when we become open-mindedness and conscientiousness. As caregivers, it's not possible to know everything. So when we create consistent routines and habits, we have a better opportunity to be successful in helping our elderly parents manage their health and in managing all of the tasks that we are doing for our elderly parents. The third in the big five personality factors is extroversion that matches with the idea of positive emotions. We all know that COVID-19 has raised levels of negativity and worry and fear. According to that research study, nearly 60% of caregivers are worried about transmitting the virus to a family member, especially an older parent. So this translates to if your parent doesn't live with you, how do you communicate without this person-to-person contact or visits? Because of the challenges of no contact, some caregivers have told me that they are considering moving elderly parents into their home. Some have already done that. They've taken their parents out of nursing homes and out of assisted living communities, moved them into their home temporarily. But now they have another problem. They realize that as they go out and their young children start to go out and come back into the house, they could be presenting a greater health risk to those elderly parents. So now they're worried about moving their elderly parents back into those communities after all of the nursing home scares and the lockdowns and the publicity about the virus. So it seems like right now there's no perfect care options. And I'm not really sure that anybody has all the answers for the risks that are posed by COVID-19. So let's talk a little bit more about this idea of extroversion and positive thinking. Participation in elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs benefit from having an optimistic attitude about learning new information and improving skills to be successful 
in that role of a caregiver. The percentage of the workplace who is feeling depressed or hopeless and helpless, they may tend to be a little more close-minded. Maybe they have black and white thinking where it's A or B, all or nothing, no compromise, no meeting in the middle. That type of thinking actually makes those people feel more anxious, more stressed. Catastrophizing is another tendency related to depression, stress, and anxiety that happens when a caregiver or sometimes an elderly parent just ruminate about worst case scenarios. And sometimes if we constantly focus on like, what if this happens or what if that happens, it can freeze us from taking any action and all at all to move forward. And sometimes when we don't have enough information, we can't make decisions either. And then our minds just take us to this place of thinking that everything is a disaster and it's terrible. That last idea relates to negative thinking, and it kind of goes into the idea of discounting the positive. So an example of that would be saying, well, we're a a basketball team. We only won this game because the other team was having a bad day. It didn't have anything to do about, you know, us being a good team. Elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs will stretch people in those programs to think more positively. We talked about being extroverted and being positive as a good quality. We can talk about the opposite, which is another big five trait called neuroticism, which describes negative responses to stress. Highly neurotic people are likely to be more anxious, depressed, and angry. They are more vulnerable. They doubt their abilities. They're more likely to make negative statements saying, oh, this will never work. And they also have a more difficult time coping with change, stressful situations, and problem solving. So COVID-19 for people who are neurotic right now is a bad situation especially because sometimes those people just want to protect themselves and they don't want to think of new ideas or options or how to solve problems. And so that creates sometimes some self-fulfilling prophecies where people act in ways that will guarantee that they're going to fail. The last five of these big five personality factors is the idea of agreeableness. Being agreeable means that we want to get along with other people. And it can relate to teamwork in the workplace, too, and teamwork in family caregiving situations. But there's pluses and minuses. Being too agreeable as a caregiver can result in burnout and exhaustion, like Dr. Fagundes talked about, because caregivers will always say yes, and they feel that they can never say no. Agreeableness is also the idea of that primary caregiver who tries to do it all. Women are more likely to do that than men. And while we all want to be agreeable and work with others, elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs will teach you that it's best to try to balance the caregiving and the teamwork, 50% by the caregiver, 50% by the elderly parent. And if there are other people in the family, the more that you can get them to participate so that that primary caregiver doesn't feel like they're being overwhelmed or taking advantage of, that works out better. Now we have this new world of remote work and caregiving. With that, the factors of being conscientious and agreeable are very beneficial in all aspects of life. Conscientious people always find ways to get things done. So we're going to continue to talk about this after the break, and we'll talk about the nursing home lockdowns and more issues related to COVID, um, caregiving training, education, on-site videos, caregiving video conferences. Those all support working caregivers when they are included in corporate employee wellness programs. More information for caregivers and aging adults is on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. This is Pamela D. Wilson. You are listening to The Caring Generation live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran's folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. 
Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. This is the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. We're back to continue talking about COVID-19 and being a working caregiver and how all of this has raised awareness of health concerns for the elderly and people with chronic disease, which I actually see as a positive. But... In all of this, we're also going to talk about the idea of caregivers feeling unprepared and unsupported. And that can really be true of any significant life transition because being a caregiver, it takes a lot of twists and turns. Human resource departments are really challenged to identify elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs that can meet the wide ranging needs of the working caregiver population. Because elderly parents will move through different stages of caregiving and sometimes back and forth and up and down, there's no one quick or easy answer to situations that are already in motion. So one plan is to offer elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs that increase awareness of the complexities of caregiving before these things happen. That concept is the difference between reflecting on change instead of reacting to change. So think about how the world might have reacted differently to COVID-19 if that threat of this 100-year virus was investigated and planned four years ago. The last time the world saw something like this was the flu of 1918, even though we've seen some bumps in the road In 2002 to 2004, SARS was back. 2009, we had H1N1. Then we had Ebola, but we figured out how to manage those. The facts stand, education does have a positive effect for population health. The more educated we desire to become, we agree to become as individuals and working employees and working caregivers, the better we become at problem solving and asking the right questions. We can build some critical thinking skills. We can make better decisions for our health and the care of our elderly parents. So if we think about combining elder care and caregiving education with these aspects of the big five personality traits, we build resilience. We can bounce back more positively to respond to stress instead of letting stress make feel like it's, we're drowning. UN resource departments who are investing in elder care workplace solutions and elder care programs can support healthy behaviors for working caregivers and transfer that knowledge. It goes to the care of our elderly parents. According to writer Annie Dillard of Gettysburg College, the average person spends 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime or one third of our lives working. It is so true that our jobs make a huge impact on our quality of life. Becoming educated makes a significant impact on our quality of life, including our health and years down the road for us. 
I know so many caregivers who are very uncomfortable navigating the healthcare system, especially trying to work with care communities and nursing homes and hearing about all of the scary lockdowns. They don't know whether they should put their parents in or take their parents out or go to a doctor appointment or not go to a doctor appointment. A lot of caregivers don't trust the medical system because they don't understand how it works. And what we all have to realize is, is that the, the healthcare system has other priorities. They have a lot of priorities which don't always match what we as caregivers want or expect. And the reality is, in my opinion, the workplace needs to support working caregivers and working employees. Otherwise, we're not going to make the progress that we need to. Employees need access to systems like computer labs in the workplace, online elder care workplace solutions, so that we have greater access to health care. We're not as intimidated. We know what questions we should be asking to be able to make this work for everybody. If you have future ideas for radio programs, most of these subjects come from the caregivers in my groups, you can visit my website at PamelaDWilson.com. Go to the contact button at the top and you can send me an email. You can also follow me on Facebook. My page is PamelaDWilson.page where you can join my caregiving group. It is called The Caregiving Trap. Please do share The Caring Generation with your family and your friends. One in four people you know are caregivers out there looking for hope, help, and support that is here every Wednesday night and in all the podcast replays of the radio show. I thank you all for being family caregivers for your elderly loved ones. And thanks to all the professional health care workers out there who are doing an amazing job during COVID-19 and with all of this work. Please invite your family, your friends, and your coworkers to join us every Wednesday evening. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. God bless you. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and a great week until we are together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.